It's been around two weeks since I laid my hands on the Galaxy A55 and honestly speaking I am more than impressed with this device. From my perspective, the A55 stands out as one of the most significant upgrades within the A-series. Nearly every aspect of the A55 has seen an improvement compared to its predecessor. This is my full review of the Samsung Galaxy A55. Stay tuned until the end of the video where I'll give you my verdict on whether the A55 is worth your investment. Contrary to its predecessors the A55 looks and feels amazing. That's because it is made of premium materials like glass and aluminum. Its back glass is glossy and it attracts fingerprints a lot but its color choices are fantastic and this one is my favorite. The aluminum frames are flat like on the S24 except where the keys are located. On the front the A55 has slightly larger bezels but they aren't as distracting as on the A54. This device is also IP67 dust and water resistant and for protection they used Corning Gorilla Glass Victus Plus. The Samsung Galaxy A55 has a 6.6-inch Super AMOLED display with a full HD plus resolution and 120Hz refresh rate. The display of the A55 is the best of every phone from the A-series so far. It gets very bright and with the high refresh rate every task is smooth. Its colors are also fantastic and watching content on this display is just a joy. For its size the screen of the A55 isn't as sharp but for the majority of people this isn't really a big deal. Overall I would say that the display of the A55 is almost flagship level and definitely the best in the industry when it comes to its price. The A55 comes with Android 14 out of the box with One UI 6.1 on top of it and the software experience is great. Scrolling through the UI feels smooth and so far I haven't experienced any sort of lag. This phone will for sure get a lot of updates since it has just been released although it won't be supported for 7 years like the S24. The A55 is powered by the Exynos 1480 and even though it does a good job with apps and games it takes a couple of seconds more to load them compared to the S24 Ultra for example. Considering that the A55 is much cheaper I think this is a fair trade-off since it really delivers for its price. The Samsung Galaxy A55 comes with 8 or 12 GB of RAM and with two storage options that are 128 or 256 GB. As you can see I have here the base model and honestly this is more than enough for me especially since the micro SD card slot makes a comeback after being removed on the A54. The Samsung Galaxy A55 comes with stereo speakers and these speakers are just okay. They get very loud and clear but for someone like me who is used to better speakers on more expensive phones these don't sound as good. If you come from an older phone from the A series then these speakers will be a nice upgrade. When it comes to biometrics the main way to secure this device is with an optical and display fingerprint scanner. This scanner is reliable but it isn't really the fastest. It does the job every time but it takes longer to do the task. A face scanner is also present and it too does the job well. The Samsung Galaxy A55 has a 5000 mAh battery capacity and battery life has been exceptional for me so far. This phone can easily last you through a day with a single charge even if you are a heavy user. If you don't use your phone that much, chances are that the A55 will last you two days or more. The battery life on this phone is even better than the S24 Ultra. When it comes to charging the A55 isn't as good since it supports only 25 watts. It usually takes more than an hour to get a full charge. Wireless charging and wireless power share aren't present on this device since Samsung gives these features only to its flagship phones. Finally let's talk about the cameras. The Samsung Galaxy A55 has triple cameras on the back. The main lens is 50 megapixels and it takes great shots in daylight and low light. Its pictures are sharp with plenty of colors and dynamic range. The gap between the main camera of the A55 and the main camera of the S24 is really small this year. This camera can crop in at 2x without a drop in quality but beyond that the results aren't that good. The 12 megapixel ultra wide camera is also good but it fails short compared to its main lens. In daylight pictures are good but its colors aren't as accurate while in low light it struggles a bit with light reflections. 
Still I would call this camera as one of the best when it comes to mid-range phones. The third camera is a 5 megapixel macro lens and if you like taking macro pictures it does the job well but otherwise a proper telephoto lens would have been more useful. The selfie camera is 32 megapixels and although pictures are very sharp and detailed, skin colors aren't always as accurate. The A55 can record videos up to 4K at 30fps and the results are good with the main camera since it has OIS. The ultra-wide camera isn't as stable at this resolution while at 1080p it performs better but footage isn't as detailed. The front camera does also record at 4K and just like with pictures faces are sharp but skin colors aren't accurate. The A55 however is one of the only mid-range phones that can record 4K videos with its front camera. Overall the cameras of the A55 are great and reliable for its price and in my opinion if you come from an old mid-range device you will be happy with these cameras. So what are my final thoughts about the A55 and is it worth buying? Honestly yes it is. Where I live the A55 costs $400 and for this price there isn't a more complete phone than this device. It has a premium build quality, a flagship level display, reliable cameras, and an awesome battery life. It is also powerful enough to do most tasks. If you are planning to buy a new phone that doesn't break the bank then the A55 should be your choice. If you did enjoy this video a thumbs up would be appreciated. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.